This is my video on analyzing Remember Ludlow. Let's go! Now, first things first. I always begin analyzing a piece by annotating it, as you see here. I underline any of the author's diction that sticks out to me to gain a sense of the tone, what mood the author is establishing for the readers, and what writing style the author employs. In the first line of Remember Ludlow, Julia Courtney writes crushed, downtrodden, despised minors, which immediately reveals her tone as critical and depressing and further supports it throughout the entire passage. As I continue reading, I come across the line, has served again to notify the world that labor will not down, which I understand to be the author's voice shining through the piece about the strength of labor strikes, and more broadly, people who will fight for what they believe in. This line plays an important part in determining her purpose, which I'll dig into later. After reading the second and third paragraphs, I relate them as being the exigent paragraphs, which introduce the audience to the reasons Remember Ludlow was written in the first place, by explaining the background and the immediate occasion of the massacre, while also utilizing a unique style of parallelism, explained later on. She begins by saying that the Colorado miners have had their status quo shaken from blissful peace to chaotic terror when the federal troops were ordered to end a strike protesting low wages and abysmal working conditions in the mines. By describing this, the author paints a picture of the setting before the immediate occasion to inform the audience on events leading up to it. In paragraph 3, the author narrows down her writing from the previous paragraph and describes specifically what happened to the strikers just as the heavy winter on the mountain settled down. I emphasize that line because Julia Courtney cleverly parallels the changing seasons to the changing lives of the miners. In the second paragraph, she mentions that Colorado is practically basking in eternal sunshine to signify its peaceful setting before having the heavy winter on the mountain settle down, which is comparable to growing tensions as the troops arrive to discourage strikers. Then, in the fourth paragraph, she writes that the first spring winds blew over the hills and the snow melted from the mountainsides, signifying the climactic point in which the tension broke and many miners on strike and their families were shot and burned by the troops. Continuing, paragraph 5 reveals the author's nonlinear structure because she flashes back to prior events that led up to the climactic massacre. By filling in the audience on all the details and events that culminated in the bloodbath, she further informs the audience so that they gain a wider perspective on all the causes of the Ludlow Massacre to form a more informed decision if the miners were truly innocent while the corrupt companies and the troops were truly at fault. Applying this understanding to her purpose for this piece, I'm given more evidence to support informative, persuasive, and especially inspirational modes that serve her message to convince her audience to never forget what transpired on that tragic day, hence remember Ludlow, and inspire them to stand up for what they believe in, even under threat, like the miners, to bring about societal change. The sixth paragraph ushers in vividly appalling imagery by describing fires ravaging tents that housed women and children, bullets striking down their husbands or fathers, and one specific victim who was first clubbed, then shot in the back while he was already a prisoner, and finally ended up with 52 bullet holes piercing through his flesh. After reading this paragraph, I much more easily pictured the cruel torture inflicted upon the miners and their families because of Courtney's descriptive diction and the resulting imagery. Additionally, the massacre being related to the Holocaust and revealing the soldiers were nearly cutting off heads and limbs just to show their content for the strikers signifies the barbarism that afflicted the miners and their loved ones. From her numerous descriptions, I am filled with sorrowful emotions that I'm sure she wanted her audience to feel. Thus, it serves her purpose to persuade her audience to assist those abused and underrepresented in society. Moving on to the last three paragraphs, the author mentions that 55 women and children perished in the fire which strikes me as serving her agenda to portray the troops as killing innocents, not just the men, but their families too. 
I'm quite certain her intended audience at the time sympathized more with the strikers and their families being portrayed as lambs to the slaughter, rather than if they're depicted as people causing civil disorder by striking, because of the grieving emotions evoked by her words. Then, in the second to last paragraph, the author reveals what I have perceived her to be in favor of by writing, For the first time in history of the labor war in America, the people are with the strikers. They glory in their success. She points out a major change in American society that favors those previously underrepresented and abused, and because of the message throughout her essay and the strategies she uses to accomplish it, I conclude that she's persuading and inspiring her audience to join in on the progressivist movement. My thoughts are further supported in the final paragraph when the author writes, For peace can never be built on the foundation of greed and oppression and the federal troops cannot change the system. Only the strikers can do that. After reading that sentence and understanding the anarchist background of Julia Courtney, I gather that she supports those who wish to change the system by standing up for what they believe in, even if it goes against the tide of society and government and threatens their lives likely because she believes that true change only occurs through a drastic societal transformation, and that, by remembering Ludlow, her audience can be inspired to stand apart from the crowd and breed true change like the miners who sacrifice their lives to transform the system against big businesses and for workers.